This is the place to be right here? Yeah, pretty much. Maybe a little bit more. Good morning to you. I haven't done one of these in a little while. I think the last two workouts that I did, I, I skipped this recording stuff just because I wanted to focus on the workout. I also didn't have a lot of time to work out, so I didn't want to spend that setting this up. But um, just kind of giving you a little recap. Today I'm doing upper body. They're very ugly, not pretty whatsoever. But it uh, feels good to be doing pull-ups again. Bench press, I rather quickly went back up to some of my old rep weight. This weight right now, I'm only getting about six, seven, but I was I was doing about six to eight on these, so didn't lose much strength. Pretty excited about that, considering you know two years off, I figured I would have it would have taken me a lot longer to get back in the strength game. But I guess when you spend half your life doing this and then stop for two years, it doesn't make a huge difference. At least not physically, mentally. Totally different story, but anyway, let's get back to it. Six. You know, one rule I have with lifting by myself is you better be damn sure you know that you have one more um, because you really can't rep to failure unless you're very in tune with your body. And I think, you know, it's nothing special for me. I just have been lifting so long. I know, I know what my one rep left kind of feeling is, you know, if I'm struggling on a, on a rep, but I, you know, I clear a certain amount of distance in a certain amount of time, I know I can do at least two more. But uh, yeah, things like bench press, don't mess around with reps to failure, uh, if you're by yourself anyway, because not good news. I've actually dropped, it wasn't a lot of weight, thankfully, but I dropped, when I was first doing 45 on each side, I dropped the weight and I was, there's only one other person in the gym and I dropped it and I tilted it over and I I mean, I was panicking, but I wasn't in danger. And uh, yeah, this guy runs over to me and he's like, hey man, you know, you're all right. I was like, yeah, I'll be okay. He's like, why are you doing that when you're the only one in the gym? I remember looking at him going, well, I wasn't going to do this until you walked in because it was a small gym. It was like a country club I worked at. I was the, like the front desk person. And so I would use, I used to work out at the end of my shift, like the last hour from eight to nine, I'd work out. So, you know, one of the advantages of working out in your own garage is you can just rip them in the middle of your sets and while you're chilling i'm pretty sure i used to do that in the gym but like it's not as smooth that being said one of the disadvantages of working out in your own gym and ripping your own farts is when you get out into the real world you forget that you can't just rip them wherever you want and you have to have that like second thought it's like dude where are you are you at work you probably shouldn't rip it in this meeting or like hey you're talking to this person you really got a fart you gotta wait because when i'm at home in the in the garage i'll be in the middle of a set you know, I remember bench pressing the other day and I was struggling and I just couldn't flex my at the same time that I was pushing the weight and I just farted and it was, it made me laugh. So I didn't get, I didn't get all the reps in that I thought I was going to get. I had like two more, but I was laughing. So I had to stop. Nothing is harder to do than press a weight when you're laughing. Like if you think about it evolutionarily, laughing is such a disadvantage if you're like in a fight because you get all weak, right? You like, you kind of just, your body just kind of gets like, oh, we're happy now. We don't have to tense up. And so you sort of lose your composure. Yes. It's not a positive when you're in a fight. Getting back on the workout grind again really hasn't been that bad. Out of the two between nutrition and fitness, the hardest thing really has just been nutrition. Like I don't foresee myself ever dieting again, like in the near future, just because To me, having lower body fat really isn't an advantage anymore. Like there's no, like I have no aesthetic reasons to do it. Like before I was trying to push myself to like a level that I didn't have before. And now that I've sort of been there and done that and realized how hard it is to maintain, I'm just just not that interested anymore. Like I've got so many other things in my life that need my energy and my time. Like my nutrition plan right now is just try to get more protein in, try to get more veggies, and then naturally the junk foods will sort of displace themselves. Not that I'm restricting them, I'm just trying to reduce the quantity. And it's not working. I'm not doing a very good job of it. Um, And you know, honestly, I I don't really care. And I don't mean I don't really care, like I've given up. I just mean like, you know, at a certain point in your life, you weigh all the different things and you just, different things have different important levels. I'm not, my health is not at risk because of my body fat percentage. I'm working out, I'm doing all the things physically that I you know need to do. I'm getting as much protein as I can. I'm not, you know, eating donuts every day. Like I'm still being pretty diligent. I'm just not being top notch. And that's okay. Because for me, I don't need to be that restrictive in order to see results. I'm also not really putting myself to some sort of standard. I've done all that. I'm over it, you know? So I forgot to set my workout. This is the second time I've done this. I don't want to do high intensity interval training. That's not the one I picked. There we go. Traditional weight training. All right. Five. 
<clears throat> so that was a good example of that last rep being a one rep left kind of thing. Like I just felt it in my body. I was like, you know what? I'm not pushing this fast enough, soon enough. Just, yeah, you start to learn, just get very in tune with your body with, with lifting. And maybe even faster with exercises like overhead press and bench press, because those have the highest risk of injury if you don't, you know, if you're alone and you can't put it back. Squats, you know, if worst comes to worst, you just drop it off your back or drop it off the front. I mean, you don't want to do that, but it's better than crushing yourself. And then deadlifts, you just drop the weight or you don't even finish picking it up. It's, it's one of the safest exercises for, for failing that you could possibly have, especially if you have like bumper plates and you know, all that good stuff, but yeah. So I'm gonna do one more set of bench press after I rest and then we'll start doing pull-ups and some, some chest flies. Probably gonna throw in some lateral raises too. Did some shoulder press at the end of my leg day on Saturday. If I had to prioritize you know, a split of my body, it's definitely upper body. Like lower body, I've, you know, I, I just wanna maintain and slowly get some strength, but I'm not trying to build my legs up. Like, you know, I just, I'm five, six, like I, I don't want huge legs. I've already had big legs and honestly, it wasn't worth it. Like I don't regret it, but like there wasn't a lot of advantages to having bigger legs. I'd rather have, you know, legs with better endurance, you know, things like that. Like I, I would rather be able to do, you know, a hundred yards of walking lunges than be able to squat 600 pounds. It just, that's the point I am in my life. Squatting heavy is one of the things that I hate the most. Deadlifts, different story, but heavy squats, nah, I'm good. I'm still gonna do them. I'm just not gonna do them like I used to. All right, let's try to get one more set in. Ugh, I got a fart. Not even two reps in. That fart went right back in. It was like, oh, we're doing bench press. I'm gonna wait for this one. When you fart and you're doing squats, you might as well just be open valve at that point. Your body does not give a crap about pension farts when you are doing squats. It's basically looking at it like, bro, why are you even trying to hold these in? I tend to agree. Okay, so now we're gonna do flies. Flies and I'm not looking forward to how bad these chin-ups are going to look. I'll tell you that much. I love, hate chin-ups. Like when I used to do heavy chin-ups, like weighted chin-ups. I remember getting done with like just the three reps that I had to do and just feeling like, you know, same with lat pull downs. Now I know why people walk around like this. Like you have the guys in the gym that have invisible lat syndrome, that pump they get must just be nuts. I don't think I've ever felt so pumped that I'm like walking around like this. I mean, I felt like, you know, big chest, tall back, but you know, it's just good posture stuff. I don't think I've ever been interested in walking around like this. About a year and a half ago, me and my buddy were talking about body language and like confidence and how like chin up and out, you know, shoulders back, chest out, arms slightly out the side like this is like a confident posture, right? So whenever we see each other in the hall, we'd exaggerate it. We walk around like this, you know, like just to be funny. He wasn't really that into it, but I took it to the extreme. I felt, I feel like he felt kind of embarrassed, like I took it too far, but I don't give a shit. It was funny as hell. All right, chin ups, and then we gotta do some flies. Let's see how this goes. Arms back a little bit. Oh, I gotta take my ring off. Cannot do chin ups with a ring on. You have to be married to the bar, not your spouse. My elbows are not a fan of that. Not in like a painful, bad way, but just in a like, bro, we haven't done these in a while. What are you doing? I did weigh myself the other day. It was funny. We have our scale in our bathroom and our daughter went in there and she stepped on the scale and she noticed the numbers were coming up and she's only two. So like, I'm not that worried about it. She gets older. I'll, you know, take the scale away for a little while, but she was all excited about it. And I was like, well, I'm here. I'm going to go ahead and weigh myself. And I weighed. So I weighed once or that day I weighed 175 and I can't remember the one, the last time I've been up since that. So with my body, the way it is now with all the muscle mass that I've, I don't mean, I'm not saying that Never mind. Cut this part. With all the muscle I've built over the years, I've I've gained about 10 pounds of muscle, I'd say. Because my natural weight before I started lifting was always like 165, 167. Now I hit 175 and I pretty much stay there no matter what my you know, diet looks like for the most part or my lifting schedule. So now what I'm trying to do is I'd like to get down to 170 because I feel like being a little bit lighter would be better for me. But I'm not, again, I'm not like actively pursuing it. I'm just focusing on consistency right now. I've learned my lesson dieting, you know, 30, 40 times in my lifetime. The more you rush into it, the sooner it crashes. It's better to just take it easy, kind of warm yourself up to everything. It's just not worth it. I feel like a, an old sage when I say things like, oh, you know, don't rush into it. And there's plenty of people that didn't take my advice, which I thought was so funny. It's like, oh, you want me to, you want to pay me and not listen to what I have to say? It sounds like such a waste of money. 
And it was. What those people really needed was a therapist, not a trainer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. You know, one thing it'll be fun to experiment when I get to this stage is one of the things that I, I made. I don't know if it's a mistake or if it's just a learning lesson. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, there'd be times where I'd get to workouts and I would just I would just feel drained like the beginning of a workout and I'd still push through it. And I think this time I'm going to allow myself to I have no reason to overtrain. I have no reason to push it beyond what my body's trying to tell me before I, I was just fueled by trying to hit a result. And thankfully, I didn't have any negative side effects to that. But my lifts were just not good for a week. And so I never, I shouldn't say never, I rarely properly deloaded. Um, and this time around, I can't wait till deload happens. Like when my body starts telling me like, dude, you need to back off a little bit. I'm going to be like, say no more. I'm ready to just chill, eat, you know, let my body recover and then get back, get back to it. I used to have clients that were worried that during their deload week that they would like fall off. And I'm like, well, you're not going to fall off. You're still coming to see me. We're just changing the way our workouts are structured. And it goes back to why showing up is so important, you know, whether it's a, you know, a deload week or a heavy prime week, it's, you still got to do something and showing up's more important than anything else. Okay. We can do it, Elvos. Wide. Oh, baby. Oh, getting the gases. I wish I would have started my watch when I actually started my workout. Then I wouldn't have to guess how long my workout's been. 15 minutes. So I've probably been out here for at least another 15. So I hit my 30-minute goal. Props, bro. Thanks, bro. I don't know if anyone else is like this, but if I finish my first superset, there's a part of my brain that's like, all right, dude, you did enough today. Especially when I work out in my garage. I'm like, I did something today. That's all I care about. Everything else is a bonus point. Whereas before, if I didn't finish my workout, I felt like I, like I was failing. Now I'm just grateful to get anything in. It is easier to wake up on upper body days than it is lower body days. I think going forward, just knowing myself and knowing you know how I approach it, I think I'm just going to do lower body days on the weekends because I've had a breakfast. I can work out at noon when she goes down for a nap. It's just easier to do. So we'll see. Still figuring out that schedule. The nice thing too about chin-ups is you don't really have to do biceps that day. You can kind of just live off of the chin-up pump. It feels a little uneven. There we go. I'm always afraid this cage is going to fall on my head. Two, three, four, five, six, one, twelve, nine. Gosh, those gas me more than bench press. So a couple years ago I did uh, my genetic testing, like the 23andMe stuff. Not a big surprise. 97% of my family is from Northern Europe. Go figure. Blue eyes, blonde hair, that kind of stuff. Um, but one thing that was really cool is, I don't know if her name is still found my fitness, um, but Rhonda Patrick had this thing where you could put your 23andMe uh, data into her program, and for $10, she would spit out all this much more useful information from like nutrition, genetic factors, uh, muscle fiber type, stuff like that. And I have, I forget what the name of it is. It's, it's, I think it's fast twitch muscle fibers, whichever one it is that's like powerlifting-esque, right? Whatever one that is, I forget what it's called, the technical term. But I also found out that I've got three different genes that predispose me to Alzheimer's, which is wild because my grandfather died of dementia. And I don't remember if he had Alzheimer's as like a part of that, but something very interesting, he was very into nutrition. And unfortunately, he was very into nutrition in the 90s and sort of lived that out where he didn't eat any fats. So he was super low fat, typical kind of like 90s diet at that time. And then I learned, you know, omega-3s are great for your brain. They help keep your brain sharp and running and all this stuff. And, you know, the, the, the regimen for somebody who has a lot of genetic factors for things like Alzheimer's and dementia is, in fact, a healthy dose of omega-3s. So very interesting. So I got my dad starting to take fish oil regularly because, I mean, if I have it, he has it, you know. So that's the power of genetic testing. Like, we would have never known that. Had we been eating a traditional diet, we probably would have never known. But, you know, interesting stuff. I really don't want to do any more pull-ups. I've never really gotten high reps on pull-ups. I think when I weighed my lightest, I think I was 165, I was lean as hell. I don't know if I was training for something or what, but if I can find the picture, I'll put it on the screen. I was lean. Dude, I was killing it. I think I did like 20 pull-ups. Pull-ups make a huge difference. Like how many you can do based on how much you weigh, huge difference. Like I remember I cut 10 pounds. I'm sure a little bit was muscle, but I was doing all the right things, weight training, eating protein, 
calorie deficit. I was, I was killing it. I'd like to try that again at some point, you know, I'd like to try to like really lock it in like that, but probably gonna have to wait until my daughter's in school where she can wake up on her own and have her own morning routine and all that good stuff. Get some water in two, four, nine, one, three, four, three. Oh yeah. I was trying to be quiet with that one. That did not work very well at all. Ooh, I don't even think I'm ready for 30 pound lateral raises. I think 20s is about as good as it's gonna get. Two, three, six, seven, eight. Oh man. I don't think I ever got very high in these guys. What's up, stinky gold? Why am I so winded from lateral raises? Come on, man. What are you thinking? Okay, that's not happening. <gasps> All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Cut.